Good day. Welcome to First Take exclusively on YouTube. I got a big YouTube star right here to my right, Stephen A. Smith. Hey, Steve. Not as All big right. as I'm going to be. Look oh, up. boy. Here yeah. we go. What is wrong with you? We got hoops to get into. It's not always about you and your agenda. Mm -hmm. UConn and South Carolina, Stephen A., both completed in all seriousness very impressive runs with national yeah. championships. UConn beat all of its opponents in the tournament by at least 14 points, extremely dominant, while South Carolina finished the season undefeated. SA, so another March Madness in the books. What was your biggest takeaway? Well, listen, I think that a, a, it's a few things. It's not one thing. The biggest takeaway is the women's game elevating to the level that it did. Um, over 18.7 million viewers for the national championship game Sunday afternoon. Uh, the women's game has really elevated itself in its profile. And not only when we say the women's game, we ain't talking about women's college basketball alone. We're talking about women's basketball on the collegiate and the pro level. Um, and I think when you see that, because now Caitlin Clark's got you wondering and transfixed on what she's going to do on the, NBA, on the WNBA level. Mm -hmm. So I think that goes a long way. But South Carolina undefeated Dawn Staley and her greatness. Um, you know, Juju, Juju Watkins at USC. Uh, we can't ignore that. Paige Beckett's coming back and what we're expecting from UConn when some of those players that's on the bench going to be in the lineup next year, they'll probably challenge everybody for the national championship. And of course, South Carolina isn't going anywhere. And so when you look at it from that perspective, I think that's the biggest takeaway, what Caitlin Clark was able to help the sport become and how many people stand to benefit from women in women's sports overall. That's the number one story. Uh, but I think number two as well is the, is the greatness of Danny Hurley yeah. as a coach and how that's really come into the mind's eye of everybody in the nation. And we've looked at, we're looking at UConn in a different manner now. We've talked about North Duke and North Carolina for ages. The days of UCLA with John Wood and the long gone. We're looking at Kentucky and they haven't had a championship in over 12 years. And you look at UConn over the last 25 years, they've got six national titles. And so mm -hmm. you're just looking at it right now. You're seeing the dawn of a new day in terms of recognition, UConn. I said a week ago, they were like number three behind Duke and North yeah. Carolina. I have to change that position over the last 25 years with what we're seeing them doing. They're right there, and they could obviously make a very, very legit argument that they're the greatest program mm -hmm. um, in the modern era of NCAA basketball. Yeah. Honestly, and as much as I'm a diehard UConn fan and been going to games since I was little, I agree with you that the bigger storyline, though, even more so than UConn going back-to-back, -back, which I think is hugely impressive. We're so lucky to have Danny Hurley and obviously losing five starters to the NBA, only having two returning starters and to pull that off, which was different than those Florida and Duke teams. But the women's game, because, Stephen A., in Connecticut, we don't have pro teams. So we love women's basketball, right? But to see it spread out around the country and those stars everywhere, and I just feel like all of those girls, whether it's Juju or whether it's Paige or whether it's Caitlin, just brought in so many new eyeballs to the sport. And I just think that visibility it's going to create for the next generation, think, that was like the game changer. I think one of the things that the ladies out here have to peel from it as well is that, you know, for better or worse, you know, the men find themselves in precarious positions from time to time. Not to say that women don't either, but more so the men. And it compromises the marketability from time to time. Mm -hmm. That's not the case with a lot of these women out here. And so the more notoriety they get in terms of more ratings that they generate, the more interest in this sport that's generated, the more you're going to see these women capitalizing off of it with commercials and what have you. Look at the commercial with Joel Embiid mm -hmm. and who's sitting next to him. It's Juju Watkins, who's a freshman. Who's a freshman at USC. She's doing commercials now, for crying out yep. loud. I, I mean, uh, Flo, Flo, Flo Johnson, I saw her in a commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, for, I, I forgot whether it was Experian or somebody else last night. You're seeing opportunities yep. come the way of these women, and it's well-deserved. It's long overdue. And obviously, they make a lot of better decisions, one would argue, from time to time throughout their lives. And because of that reality, I think you're going to see their marketability really, really elevate exponentially. And I think that's going to help their sports as well. And it's going to have it's going to help little girls and it's going to help young ladies across the nation. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's get to your Knicks, Stephen A. Obviously having a heck of a season as well, but just marred with injuries this year, which has been hugely disappointed. So Milwaukee handed the Knicks their fourth consecutive loss Sunday as Brunson dropped 43 in the 122-109 win. The Knicks now move to one game behind the Bucks in the East, tied with the Magic for the three seed. So 
SA. Obviously, as I mentioned off the top, injuries, right? We've never seen this team at all play full strength, the mm -hmm. Knicks, and they're still continuing to win. Which team is second best in the East, you think, behind Boston? I'm going to say my Knicks, who handed Milwaukee their fourth straight loss. That's what I'm going to say. I think that when you look at the New York Knicks, uh, Tom Thibodeau is a candidate for coach of the year. Um, I, I, you know, I always knew he was good, but I was a guy that preferred Ty Lue personally when I thought about the usage of players because I thought that Tom Thibodeau might run them into the ground, wear them out, et cetera, et cetera. And that still might be the case, but it doesn't take away from the absolutely fabulous job that he has done. I got to give props where it's due to Leon Rose. I still uh, believe that he should make himself more available as opposed to hiding in the corridors of Madison Square Garden or wherever the hell their practice facility and other places are. Um, no doubt. Out, but what he has done as president of basketball operations with his staff, World Wide West, and others is nothing short of phenomenal. I got to give credit where credit is due. If Julius Randle wasn't hurt, I think the New York Knicks would have already locked up the number two seed in the Eastern Conference. And it's, a, it's amazing to me that they are probably going to get it even without him. Mm -hmm. Mitchell Robinson's back. OG Ananobi is back. Dante DiVincenzo has been balling. Of course, you've got Jalen Brunson, who is going to make an all-NBA team because he's been absolutely fabulous. I can't even contain my excitement about the Knicks, how proud I am of them and what they have been doing, how hard they fight, how feisty they are. And I think that when you look at the way they play defense, I think the New York Knicks are going to capture the number two seed, and I think the New York Knicks are going to get to the conference finals. And, oh, by the way, let me state this for the record. I want a rematch with the Miami Heat. I want, but that was if Julius Randle had got hurt. I <laughs> oh, you really that. stuck I your chest out on I, that I, one. I, I, I wish I, we could replay that tape. Like, I, I want it. And I, then it's like, whoa, well, no, 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 no. Well, actually, I, I forgot okay. the injury report. The, the, the injury you forgot report. he got surgery. The, the injury report, exactly. But I would want Miami very, very badly in a rematch of last year's NBA hey. playoffs. But I think the New York Knicks, I think to me the two teams is Miami and Boston, but I still think the New York Knicks are the second best team in the East. I'll wrap it up um, with this. Obviously, it's Denver and the Celtics, right? Yes. Everyone's predicting the finals. Yes. But outside of that, there's so much parity in the NBA this year. Especially the Western It Conference. is going to be so exciting as far as the playoffs and yes. who could go the distance. Yes. Um, obviously, no those heavyweights either. we're expecting at the end. But outside of those two, it's going to be a lot of fun. Dallas. When does it officially start? April 18th? April, 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 yes. Oh. 18th, 19th. Yes. All right. Play and tournament ones before then, though. 17. We're about 10 days away. Buckle right. up. No vacation for you. None. Thanks for watching First Take exclusively for YouTube. Make sure to tune in weekdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Check in right back here for more exclusive YouTube content. And you can always watch the Stephen A. Smith show on YouTube as well. Like and subscribe. He needs the love.